Well, hi, Tubers. Hi, I'm back with six more 60 books. And, uh, right, so, I like this. I've done the first one. I've done the third one. Now I've done the second. Right, here we are. City of Stars, um, the book two of the Stravaganza novels by Mary Hoffman. Okay, so. And, uh, so here, let me just read the blurb. Okay. When Georgia finally saves up enough money to buy a little winged horse model, she's been mine for so long. She is far from realising the power that comes with it. The horse is in fact a talisman that will transport Georgia to city century Italia. Once in Italia, Georgia is plunged into a dangerous and treacherous world of new horse racing, sorry, of horse racing, family honour and, and a deadly rivalry. And Georgia, as a new Stravangate, have a dramatic and extraordinary role to play. Right, okay, so... In the real world, our world, Georgia knew Luca, who was a protagonist of the first novel, Luca, who was dying of cancer, okay? And, spoiler here, at the end of the first book, he basically gives up his life on Earth and dies, in our world, and then goes to Talia and he's living his best life there, if you will, okay? And Talia is kind of like set in a parallel Renaissance Italy. Right, so... It's very, very interesting. However, in the real world, Luca, sorry, Georgia, is um, basically her stepbrother is bullying her badly. His name's Russell. Basically, um, mental abuse. Now, Georgia is... Now, this book came out in 2003, so this kind of style... But Georgia has very, very cropped hair. And essentially, people call her lesbian. Okay, now I was kind of hoping that it kind of would have gone in that direction, you know, because she's not really into boys, she's into her horses, and she's active in that department. And I truly, truly hope that maybe they'll kind of may help her kind of actually make her gay. Okay, it turns out no, um, she actually fancied Luca, who passed away until she goes over to Talia and. There you go. This is an example. This is page 22. George remembered the candlestick. She had seen him in the window the day the winged horse had appeared. She never went straight from home from school. She always dawdled, looking in shop windows and taking long detours. She never wanted to be at home alone with Russell before her mother got in from work. It's lovely, she said quickly to divert her thoughts. It looks old. What a chap are you? said Mr. Garsoff suddenly. It was his turn to blush. Sorry, I can't keep up with young your you young people's fashions. It's the case of Georgia. I should have said straight away. My name's Georgia O'Grady. There you go. So because she has cropped hair, everyone, even Italia assumes even Italia it's Italia, she assumes a mantle of a male because her hair's cropped. Okay? Even the way she described it is so feminine apart from the hair, it's kinda of like, really? Two thousand three after all is kinda of different with the um situations. So but uh, one thing I actually did like this book is it does kind of show that the indifferent parents. Now, obviously, Russell was her stepbrother. Her parents do love her, even though her own stepfather is very like, you should be into boys and your hobby of horses is so expensive. And would rather his stepdaughter sometimes or just to be a typical lady, if you will, even though she's a teenager and her hobbies are actually, well, actually, I think they're pretty awesome. She's, she loves horses. I love horses. Horses are cool. So, and then kind of bemoans, okay, a hobby of horse riding, okay? And this is Russell, her stepbrother. And I'm sorry if I find this language offensive, but it's in the book. You're seriously retarded, you know, said Russell, conversationally, almost pleasantly. Girls of your age grow out of horses, grow, grow out of horse things, you know, except those saddles at the, stab at the stable and they're all dykes. Georgia couldn't help herself. You've never been to the stables. You don't know anything about the people there. It's always a, always a mistake to defy Russell. He laughed unpleasantly. I bet I do. I bet that's why you like going there. The boys start hitting on you. And you're probably glad. After all, no bloke would ever look at you. Unless he was drunk or on a bet. That's the kind of mentality. Basically, Russell's a nasty, nasty, nasty bastard. Okay? So it, got, it does get to come up as later. Then the third book, which I've already reviewed, it's kind of mentioned the case of eventual fate. But this is, if you think, this is it's in Italia, okay? It's when she goes to Italia, this is page 40. 
and then she's meeting the Maltabani family who have um, essentially their horse as is just about is it a fold? A horse has just given birth, okay, and it's got wings. It's a winged horse, okay. City of Stars, after all, okay. Why did you dress as a boy? asked Paolo, the younger boy. George looked down at what she had on, grey tracksuit bottoms and a raggy t-shirt, her usual nightwear. She shrugged. This is the sort of thing boys and girls both wear where I come from. Girls wear pantaloons, said Caesar, disbelievingly, and they cut their hair like that. Not all, admitted George, running her hand across her spiky head. But they do wear pants and mean trousers, okay? Now, one thing I do later on, Georgia starts growing her hair longer which i thought was a little bit she's kind of conforming in a way she's got like, people are like and when she does people are like oh, your hair looks better a little bit longer you look a bit more like a girl and i'm like really now i absolutely love short hair okay now i can't carry off the short crop look for those who right now my hair's tied back courtesy the rhymes because i touch my hair way too often but my hair is you know absolutely nuts it's quite curly um wavy mm -hmm. and if it's short, it's normally up to here, but once I had it cut quite short, and I actually liked it, but it didn't really suit me. So I look better with, you know, a bit of a layered look, okay? However, along her misadventures, when she meets um, Luca again, okay, um, it's kind of like a love triangle, because Georgia fancies Luca, Luca fancies the Duchess, people fancy... Georgia and it comes a little bit ridiculous and the one thing I said in the third book I reviewed just now the second is that it's really really hard to keep track of all the characters at the end, end of the book it's like the family tree and it's it's absolutely massive okay the um, ch the, the Timothy family tree yeah okay so and it then goes on to Falco now Falco is um Essentially, he's a member of the fa of the Timothy family who kind of rule, rule this Italia, if you will. Okay, when they ruled Italia, or some rulers or ruled this city, and he was in an accident and he crushed his legs. So they get the bright idea to bring Falco into our world for he can get the treatment. Okay, and it's also quite cruel because once again, spoiler territory is he gets fostered and. Um, by Lucas' family in the real world because they'd lost their son and they're looking to foster and his mum actually was a social worker and it just seemed a little bit Lucas' reaction or reaction to this was he was jealous he was jealous so they have to go for all like these systems okay or ways of kind of bringing Luca into our world so Luca sorry Falco into our world and then Falco gets amnesia or pretends it has amnesia and then starts getting the treatment okay so but this, here you go. Now this be here though, because this is, um, like Luciano, which is his name in Italia. There you go. This is where um Georgia and Luca meet again. I suspect that's not what you want to know. I came from Belizea. That was the city I first navigated to last May. That is where I live now. It's, it is now my home. The three young people remained silent for a while. Caesar was rather in awe of this elegant young man, who was a year younger than a year younger than him. He had known such wonders. Luciano was extravagant, and Caesar wasn't sure what that meant. There you go. Caesar, oh, Caesar, Caesar's actually a priest, okay, who kind of gets involved, okay. And now, and now he turned out to be not only a visitor from another world, but a friend of Caesar's own personal personal extravagant. The mysterious girl with a boy's hair and no shadow. Okay. So that is the thing. So you'd have to bring Falco into our world. Okay. And I don't, the thing is, one thing I love these books is it's full of politics and intrigue and stuff like that going on. But the problem is I find it way too much going on. Now, the Duchess, who um, at the end of the book was this young orphan, well, not orphan, well, yeah, she was an orphan, turned out to be the Duchy, the Duchess' secret daughter, the Duchess faked her death, and then uh, this Duchess took over kind of thing. She's in it. But you know when there's too much going on and you lose track? And I basically, in our world, okay, Falco is taken, 
in his world, he dies. It literally is a plot reversal of the first book, okay? But the thing is, I maybe because the whole idea, and this sounds really, really negative, Luke in the first one came to Talia, Travagated, Percy the Notebook, because he was dying. Falco's just got busted legs. It's not, it's not killing him. And I just found, in a way, the kind of motivation really selfish. It's kind of idea, okay, that I'm not good enough because of my legs. And I was like, you are from a wealthy family. You are privileged and you have all this money and you can't and but to you you're useless if you can't walk so he has to come over to our one and then die in his it just seems a little bit really okay so it's a short review because um i just kind of really want to move on with it but it was good but at the same time it just felt a little bit needless in some ways so if people get their comeuppance georgia grows her hair and the love triangle is kind of resolved because obviously um, Luca has to stay in Talia. Falco actually has a crush on um, Georgia, that's clear. And it's just a little bit ridiculous in some ways. But it's not, not a bad book. I mean, I'm looking out for the fourth one at the moment. Well, I was up from in charity shops and they're closed at the moment. So that's my opinion on City of Stars. And I'm signing off here. Mm -hmm. And bye now.